Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Understanding Flash and Sync Speed. I am Abhishek and I have with me Anindo, my colleague from Nikon India technical team. Today both of us will help you understand how Flash and Sync Speed works. So Anindo, yeah, we often get a lot many queries, especially from studio photographers that I am trying to freeze a motion using my studio lights and I get black band in my image. So to understand how we can remove the black band, we have two things that majorly concentrate on the image. The first is our sync speeds that we need to understand and get a clear view on. And second part would be talking about the auto FP feature on our Nikon speed lights. So after we are done talking about both of these, we'll be easily able to remove the band and we can easily show motion if we want to freeze motion also. Right. We can do that in the studio setup. So we talk about understanding sync speed. To understand the sync speed, we first need to understand how our camera shutter works. Our camera shutter is made up of two curtains, the first curtain and the second curtain. You can presume these to be the curtains in your own house. The curtains in your own house move horizontally, allowing light to come into the room. Similarly, our camera shutter is also like a curtain. The first curtain will go up to allow light to come into the camera sensor. And when you are done taking the exposure, there is the rear curtain or the second curtain which follows and blocks the light from coming into the sensor. So Anindo, that was pretty nice explanation of how first curtain and second curtain works. So for better understanding, uh, let's show our viewers one more time this animation piece and explain how, in detail how it actually works. So this is how the two curtain works. When you press the shutter release button, it tells the camera to open the shutter. The first curtain opens to allow the sensor to be exposed to light and then the second curtain follow the first curtain to block the light. Then the curtain reset back to the first curtain and wait for you to press the shutter release button for the next shot. Now let's watch that animation again. Notice that the first curtain open completely before the second curtain begins to follow. Now this will only happen at slower shutter speed, usually at speed of 200th of a second to 250th of a second. Now Anindo, let's see what happens when we increase the shutter speed. When shutter speed is faster, the second curtain can't wait for the first curtain to open all the way. Notice in this animation, the curtain is not fully open and not allowing enough light to pass through. It's just have slit of light passing through and hitting the image sensor. This slit becomes smaller and smaller as we keep on increasing the shutter speed. In the animation, you understood how our camera shutter works. So now we can get to talk about the sync speed. Sync speed is actually the fastest shutter speed in which the first curtain goes up and before the second curtain rises, the flash fires in between and exposes the subject. So simply put, the flash sync is basically the fastest shutter speed with which we can use the flash. So Anindo, let's have a look at the same animation piece, but this time we'll use flash. So when our camera shutter speed is set to sync speed or slower, a few things happen. When you press the shutter, the first curtain opens and as soon as the first curtain is fully open, flash fires and then the second curtain closes. Now normally if you have set the shutter speed too high, then you will have issues. Let's have a closer look at higher shutter speed. When you press the shutter release button, the first curtain begins to open but before it can open fully, the second curtain begins to close. And when the first curtain is fully open, the flash fires. But this time, the part of the sensor is covered by the second curtain. This will cause the images to have black band or that black area. Faster your shutter speed, broader black band you will have in your images. Now, as Abhishek explained why we get a black band in our image, we can do something to counter this is first thing we can do is either we can use the highest sync speed available in our camera which is 1 by 258th of a second or use the Nikon speed light feature which is auto sync speed wherein you can use a highest shutter speed of up till 1 by 8000 of a second. So adding to what just Anindo said, if you want to use higher shutter speed with the flash, you need to use this feature called auto FP and to do that, you'll have to go to camera menu options. You can find this feature under custom settings menu, bracketing in flash and then going to flash sync speed and then choosing either 1 by 250 S auto FP or 1 by 320 S auto FP. We recommend choosing the later that is 1 by 320 S auto FP 
this option enables your camera to use higher shutter speeds of even 1 by 8000th of a second with the flash. So Abhishek, I think for better understanding, we need to go to a photo studio and try this feature which is the auto FV feature and we can show the results also. So Arindu, let's demonstrate how one can shoot at higher shutter speed using flash. To help us, we have Himakshi with us and she'll be helping us in demonstrating flash sync speed and how one can shoot at higher shutter speed using flash. To do that, we are using right now Nikon D750 with 2470mm lens and an SB910 speed light. Right. We have a very unique feature in D750 that you can actually trigger this flash off camera using the inbuilt flash of the camera which we call commander mode, wherein you need to do certain settings and then you can actually fire the flash using the inbuilt flash of the camera. But before we do that, we'll just take a couple of shots. One shot we'll take at the highest sync speed provided by the camera, yeah. which is flash sync speed. The camera D750 that gives the sync speed is 1 by 200th of a second. Then we'll try another picture at a auto FP mode, that is you can increase the uh, shutter speed further beyond 200th of a second. So we'll be shooting two images and our idea is to freeze the motion. So what we'll be doing here is, we'll be using these playing cards and we'll throw them up in the air and the idea here is to freeze those cards along with the model. So let's see how the images come first at a normal flash sync speed provided by the camera at 1 by 200th of a second and then we'll jump on to the auto FP mode and see what are the results. First, just hand over the camera to me and I'll give you the flash. Right. So what we'll do is, we take this flash okay. and set the flash to remote mode. Right. And I'll just pop up the inbuilt flash of the camera mm -hmm. and I'll set it to commander. I'll say I, I can actually diffuse or I can actually uh, cut the power of this flash and uh, this flash will then act only as a commander unit to trigger this flash off camera. To fire Nikon speed light off camera, that is if you want to use off camera flash, the setting that you need to do in your camera is you just have to go to custom setting menu, then you go to bracketing in flash and under that there is something called flash control for built in flash. Now there are various options like TTL, manual, repeating flash and commander mode. But we will be utilizing commander mode since we want to fire the flash off camera. Just to keep in mind, if you don't want the built-in flashlight to illuminate your subject or show any kind of impact on your subject in terms of lighting, just disable the output of this flash. Now this built-in flash will now act as a remote trigger to fire the off camera flash that is your external speed light under group a you choose ttl that is through the lens or automatic mode for the flash and then set the power intensity of your flash it could be plus three and you can further drop it down to zero and then set the channel right now we are at channel one the two things that you need to set in your speed light is group a and channel 1. Once you do that, press OK. Now your camera inbuilt flash is ready to trigger the external flash or the speed light. So our flash settings are done to remotely trigger SB910 using inbuilt flash of D750. What I'll do is right now, uh, for a couple of minutes, all these lights will go off and this whole situation will turn out totally dark. So to demonstrate what we are trying to achieve, this is very important. So what we'll do is, we'll request all of uh, our assistants here just to switch off all the lights. Okay, so what I've done is I've locked my focus onto Himakshi and uh, my shutter speed is uh, provided by the camera that is the highest flash sync speed shutter speed of 1 by 200th of a second. Right now, this is the highest sync speed provided by the camera. So let's see how the images come. Go. Can I have the lights, please? Come on, let's review the shot. Now, you can see this uh, wherein cards are not sharp because the shutter speed was not fast enough to freeze them. Mm -hmm. So this is what happens when you're shooting at the available sync speed given by the camera. By this camera, as I told you, it was one by 200th of a second. Right. So this shutter speed was not good enough to freeze the falling cards. So what we are going to do now is we are going to use this feature which is called auto fp feature in our camera mm -hmm. 
and in this camera auto fp is provided at 1 by 250th of a second that right. means i can keep the shutter speed even below 1 by 250th of a second or if i want to pull my shutter speed to even 1 by 4000th of a second second i can do that right. so let's uh, play around with shutter speed high shutter speed and see how it works and whether this is uh, th this is able to freeze the falling cards or not right. so let us try that can we switch off the lights please so uh, what i have set right now is again my i'm using camera's inbuilt uh, flash to trigger the flash that uh, anindo is having right now which is sb910 so i can remotely trigger it i am setting my flash sync speed to 1 by 250s auto fp so this will allow me to pull my shutter speed further higher probably 1 by 500th of a second i will try uh, that kind of shutter speed to freeze the falling cards so let's see how it comes here i lock the focus go can we have the lights please come on in the we'll review the shot so here you can see we've been able to freeze all the falling cards in the frame this is so much better than the previous image exactly and this happened because we were using that auto fp feature and i was using the shutter speed of 1 by 500th of a second using this feature is very easy it's not a tough nut to crack i believe uh, our viewers must have understood how one can use higher shutter speed with the flash that's right thank you imakshi for all your help anindo that was some really informative session that we just did with our model Yeah. and i think for our viewers also we shared a lot of information about how to use high shutter speed with flash and how to avoid that black band in the image and what is sync speed so i think uh, that was good uh, i think it was knowledge. very helpful and will be used by a lot of photographers exactly. because this is a common problem that many studio photographers face exactly that's it for this episode and we'll be back with some more interesting sessions until next time these are your nikon buddies abhishek and anindo signing off